All right, everybody. Today we're going to be building something really sweet, an electric guitar. This is going to be simple and easy. Basically, because we're going to make this thing ugly out of junk parts. It's not going to be pretty at all. To prove two points. Point number one, but the most important part about building any musical instruments, making them, whatever, uh, you have to use precise tuning first. And as long as you're using good enough quality materials, it'll sound just fine. You can have the prettiest instrument in the world, and it sounds like bird puke. You got a pretty piece of crap right there. So, precise tuning first, aesthetics second. The other point is that it should be, it, it's really very easy to build any kind of musical instrument, even electrified ones, from pretty much whatever you can put your hands on. So, today what we're going to be using is, hmm, some rubber strings. Uh, remember last post on the blog when we talked about alternative string materials. Anything that will make a vibration for this, because it's not going to be acoustic electric. It's just going to be electric. And let's see. Uh, hex screws with little Allen keys, Allen wrenches in them. You can find them at your local hardware store or home center warehouse. Eventually, you might be able to find them cheaper on the blog, once I put up a link or something. Bamboo skewers for frets. Stay with me on this one. Wood doweling for making our own tuning keys. Some glue. A little bit of wire. Quarter inch jack. And the most magical piece of all, the piezoelectric transducer chip thingy. Piezo, piezo, but you know what I mean. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. I got three words to say about that. I don't care. You know what I'm talking about. These things. I pulled this out of like a $2 stopwatch. Anything that goes beep, 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 you know, it's this thing. Grab it. These, actually, uh, uh, well, you can pull these out of like little $2 stopwatches like I did. On my blog, there's a link where you can get these for like pennies. They've got like bags of 10 for like three and a half bucks on the link there. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll say. Check today's, the text of today's post about that. Um, we'll also be using basic lumber. Pulled these boards out of a dumpster at a construction site. <laughs> okay, now what we're going to be doing with these is, it's kind of thin, going to be doubling them up. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a section of this piece of wood, put it on the back for the back of the headstock, and the rest of it on the front for the fingerboard. You get where I'm going with this? Alright, so, it'll be doubly thick this way for the headstock, and thick this way for the fingerboard, and the nut will go right here, and everything else. Now, as long as you have any of that, and back to the strings, again, anything that'll create a vibration that the bridge will press down on this chip, could be pretty much anything, as long as it vibrates, we'll have a sound come out of it electrically. If it was going to be acoustic and electric, then... There's a whole other world of stuff to think about. But anyway, um, all right, let's, let's get on with the video. <laughs> okay, this is how I made the nut. It's kind of big. Made it out of hardwood. Now, I made it so that the strings will go right through here. Now, if you notice, it's a little screwy on the back side. This is also to prove another point. Even if you're, like, not really skilled at drilling stuff, I am, but I did this on purpose, believe me. <laughs> as long as you start from the side of this that faces the bridge and get them all in line, doesn't really matter too much how they're like on this side towards the tuning keys. You want this to be straight most of all. Up on top here, I've got some little screws that turn with a little Allen wrench, like I showed you before in the beginning of the video. This is so that, because we're using friction pegs, there's going to be tension on them. They should be sticky enough to hold on their own as a standalone device. But, just in case, once I get them all to tune, I can lock these down, holding the strings in place to keep them in tune. I'm going to glue this right onto the fingerboard. Next! <laughs>
Okay, this here is a doweling plane, and this is a doming plane. You can find out where to get these in the tools section of the blog. Now, I took the piece of dowel and made it smaller using the doweling plane. This actually takes square stock and makes them into dowels, or larger dowels and makes them into smaller ones. Works like a pencil sharpener, just kind of like around like that. Now this I used to dome off the end. I used the larger one to dome off the other end. I used the chisel to flatten the sides to kind of make this little turnable grip thing. Put a hole in there and now you got a tuning key. Okay, so I then took a Forstner bit, which you can also find in the tool sections of the blog, and stuck it in a bit brace and hand cranked the holes through here. See that? Then I took a Dremel tool and expanded them above and below. And that's where we put the tuning keys. See? And this is already starting to look big, beastly, and ugly. Yeah. Look at that. It's not perfect at all, is it? And yet, it's going to play just fine. The most important part is to make sure that the nut and the bridge and all the frets are parallel with each other perfectly. That's where all this, the sound pitches are going to be, and that's where you need things to be exact. Be sure to remember to see two posts ago on the blog for the mathematical formula to use to figure out where the pre where precisely where the fret placements are going to be. Okay? Alright, next. Alright, now I use that same Forstner bit and put a hole in the back of the body right about here. And then I use the chisel to square it out and then actually kind of elongate it so it's more of a rectangle kind of hole to put the jack in. Drill the hole in the side to have the jack pop through and screw that on in place so that it's right in there. Then I'm going to put a hole right about there for the wire to come out through here onto the jack. The wire will be connected to the piezo chip which will sit right about here underneath the bridge. Thank you.